Hey, Olivia. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> How are you feeling? Are you excited? <clears throat> um, yeah, it's good just to I suppose, have it all out in the open now. Um, yeah. You know, I've been sitting on it now for, I think, four months or something. So it's no good to way. Sit. Yeah, yeah. Um, it happened in November. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, about four, four and a bit months, we had to hold that secret. Oh, no way. So, like, right before we talk about, obviously, getting to the final and the whole process and everything, I suppose for anyone watching that just know too much about you, um, you just completed, you're in the finalists of RTE's Hell Week. Um, a massive achievement. So, uh, how did this start? Like, how did you, obviously, you're, you're, you're a boxing coach, you're a personal trainer, <laughs> so you're into fitness, but how did you actually get to... Um, uh, join the show, I suppose. Yeah. Um. So there's a Channel Four version of it, SAS Who Dares Wins, and um, that's been knocking around a couple of years, and I, I love watching that. So anytime I watch that, I've always, I suppose, you know, you're questioning God, could I do that? Like, and it's normally on like Sunday night at nine o'clock, and you're sitting on your couch, and it's easy to say, Oh God, I would have done that. I wouldn't quit there. But um, so then last year the the Irish version came out. Mm -hmm. uh, so I suppose it became reality that you could actually try like you know and it wasn't just just uh, empty talk anymore so um I didn't see any applications for series one that passed me by somehow um but when I saw the series um at the end of it there was applications then for series two so just signed up and just gave it a go you mad joker <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like what was the what was the decision to 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 um to finally sign up and to go for it was it to test yourself or was it that you just had watched it you were a fan of the show and you were like I want to give that a shot like are you are you kind of a competitive person like competitive with yourself where, where do you kind of sit with everything yeah massive yeah it was it was definitely the challenge um and the competitiveness with myself um and just to see because it really really is there's 28 people there but you're not against anyone you're not mm. <clears throat> you're not even really with anyone you're it's you you're against your own head the whole time it yeah. just you get re you get some really deep honest conversations with yourself um and it's just can you handle that is is really you're definitely just competing with yourself like um yeah and is the, the I, I think most people kind of have an idea or they've seen the show, if not the RT one, they've definitely seen uh, the Channel 4 one. But the idea is that you're training like someone who's in the army or SAS. Um, and it's, are you, you're, you know, you're being tested at what they would be tested at? To, to a degree. So what we did was we did elements of the army ranger selection course. So the rangers would be, I suppose, the elite level of the Irish, Irish army. Now, the course we did is not exactly what they did. They their real one is a couple of months long, um, wow. but it's not as intense. Like so, they might do one of those events, say every couple of days, and then in between it, they're training or doing different drills. Whereas we had about three events a day. Like we got a real a shortened version of it, and mm. um, so it's way more intense but shorter versus like a kind of longer, more drawn out process. I for anyone that um follows you or that is watching this now if they go to your profile after this they'll see a clip that you've posted where you have your uh hands and feet uh cable tied and then you're like pushed into water yeah like, I mean for us watching it you're like okay well there's a certain element of safety because they're not gonna let you die because it's a tv show <laughs> you hope but how scary is it for someone that obviously is, is, is used to testing yourself, as you say, but then being put in that position, like the fear that's on your face in that clip alone is like, you, you get yeah, an understanding scary. of how scary it was. Um, yeah, so for some reason, I hate jumping into water. I absolutely hate it. Like, I, I can't even stand at the edge of a swimming pool and jump in. Like, I just hate it for some reason. Um, and so on night one, so one of the hardest parts with the course was, so I'm only from NACE. Um, and the, it happened in Kilbride, which is only like 15, 20 miles from Nace. Um, so anytime they were bringing us anywhere, they normally went through Nace. So I kind of got a little idea of where we were going. So on night one, so they dragged us off the bus and kind of kicked the crap out of us for a few hours. And then at 12 o'clock that night, they put us on the bus and they were driving. 
and the bus is all blacked out. But I could make out through the front window. I was like, this is Nate, like, this is <laughs> drove by my parents' house, like, and I was like, oh, Christ, like, stop the bus, let me out. But um, at a certain road, we turned right, and I knew we were going to Blessington, and Blessington is where the, the lakes are, like, so yeah. I knew we were jumping into the water that night. Um, so night one, I was kind of confronted with my biggest fear, um, and I made an absolute balls of the jump. Like, I nearly killed myself. Like, I, I messed <laughs> up so much. But then later on in the week, yeah, they had us on day six, they had us in the quarry, um, and that's when they like made us jump in but our hands and feet were cable tied together so that was just next level fear terrifying in terms of like the whole experience was it the mental side or the physical toughness that that got you like what what did you find the hardest to overcome um i i don't know if it was just me but i suppose the thing that gets everyone is the mental side of it like, mm. you know these like, there's 28 people there like they are the fittest people in this country like you know one guy literally climbed Mount Everest, like, it's not, you know, not an analogy, he literally climbed Mount Everest, like, um, there's guys there that have run 200 kilometer races, there's county footballers, county hurlers, um, international athletes, some really, really good martial artists as well, like, some, some good Thai boxers and boxers and stuff, so, it, it, it's not the physical side, everyone is able for the physical side, um, but it's, I suppose, the, the attrition with that, like, it's not, what the ranger's going to say is that most people are used to doing one marathon and then going home. Whereas this, we do a marathon and then like about two hours later, you do another one. And then about two hours later, you do another one. That's more what it's like. Um, just the, taking out the rest is, is really what kills people. Like, and yeah, this was the mental toughness that comes with that. At what stage do you kind of forget that you're on a TV show or that you have the end goal of winning the show? When does that end and when does kind of like survival really kick in or does it? Straight away. Like they, they were saying to us in the briefing that they're like, you won't see the cameras around. You won't notice them. And I was thinking, how can you not notice them? Did you see episode one? Like, so they literally dragged us off a bus like within 10 seconds and threw us in a river. We were face down in the river. Like all talk of looking good for the camera. We're just gone. It was like, yeah. shit, this is real. Like this is real. <laughs> Just cling on to something and survive this. Am I right in think did you um did you break some record or something during this? Yeah. yeah, they said so. Um there's um a really big hike, it's a twenty one kilometer hike over the mountains in Wicklow and it's kinda of synonymous with with the Ranger selection course that like you always have to do it. It's called Foreman Aftman. So there's a foreman, which is a man in front, and an aftman, which is a man behind. And you've got to stay between them. So you, if the man behind catches you, you're gone, essentially. So it's, it's a time trial, like, and you can't drop too far back. Um, so, yeah, myself and Porik, he was number 23, um, the Mayo man with kind of the long hair. Um, yeah, they said that we broke the record for it. So that's pretty yeah, cool. That's very cool. That's, that's a blue Peter badge worthy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll put that on my TV. Do, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, it was really, really great. I mean, obviously, it's it's a disappointing that, like, the current climate with everything that's going on, that you don't fully get to kind of enjoy it, as in, I'm sure there would have been loads of press and different things that would have been happening for you this week. Yeah. Um, and that's, like, so I, I run a gym in NACE, um, Unit 3 Health and Fitness. <laughs> you know, I'm getting all messages about this, and I'd love to be able to to offer like free trials to everyone and try to fill the gym this week so yeah it's, um, it's a wee bit frustrating but look in the grand scheme of things what's that to complain about really like you know so well exactly well at least when everything does open back up again you can just you know start like getting your posters printed off of like hell we finalists train with me yeah. and all, the, all the usual but let's talk about yourself and obviously with the gym I know that that's your your passion and your your job your career how did you get started into fitness? Um, as, as a kid, I was always like into it, like um, just playing soccer and being thrown out on the road and just not not allowed home till like it was you know like kids <laughs> these days and they, like we weren't allowed to come home until yeah. ten o'clock. Like, don't go in the door until <laughs> ten. Um, so you're just climbing. I think you develop like a natural fitness, like, climbing trees and running and getting in trouble and just mess fighting and stuff. Um, and then. 
I yeah I was always really fit like that you know I'd kind of have a natural fitness um mm-hmm. like I used to soccer and then I'd run to Gaelic training and then I'd run home like and I wouldn't be tired but I remember I started boxing then and night one of boxing I was fucked like I was wrecked and it was like finding something that could just satisfy that with you like it was the first thing that ever made me tired like wow. um so that was really cool so I started boxing quite late though I was kind of 16 17 like um which is quite late um and in terms of the boxing side it was, I was shit like it was terrible but I loved it like I just like they didn't touch me in the club for about six months but I just kept coming back kept coming back kept coming back like and um for me like I wouldn't really have a kind of natural talent um so I have to learn things like mechanically step by step so I think that served me really really well as a coach then whereas you know some people like that it comes so natural to them that they can't explain yes. how to do it I can explain yeah. how to do it because I had to learn and drill something a million times before I could do it whereas like you know some people are so natural they'll just do it off the bat like um I think my downfall as a boxer has been my I suppose saving grace as a coach really absolutely and then I mean did you did you compete yourself did you fight yeah 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 um like as I said like I, I was I was terrible but the good thing was I knew I was crap so like if I want to <laughs> But like, as you're one of the few that recognizes that they're terrible. Yeah, <laughs> usually like, the um, other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of delusion out there, isn't there? But um, <laughs> like, so I know, like, say, if I wanted to beat you, I can't beat you in talent. So, what are all the other elements involved? Like nutrition. So, can I make my nutrition better than you? Yeah, I can. Can I be fitter than you? Can I be stronger than you? Can I, you know? work way harder than you so I had to look at all those little kind of one percents and yes. try to make them I think as much as I could um because I was never going to be anyone on talent like you know if there's anyone worse than me they were fucking shit like so um I had to really really like my nutrition was unbelievable like I made the weight like perfectly um I had because I had to do it. I couldn't get away with like coming in you know a kilo underweight or coming in overweight or anything like that so um I had to have all the details precise um, and I think that's going to stood to me then going forward. Like, so when all this is going on, like, how old are you when you're putting all these kind of things into practice? Um, tw- um, I'm older than I look. What age do I look? Uh, this is a trick question because you're obviously older than you look. <laughs> I'm going to say twenty. 55. No, <laughs> twenty-six or seven. So I'm actually 32. No way! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes! Yeah. I'm 35, <laughs> so I'm delighted. That's... You don't love that either. I, I am 35, so I'm delighted someone is in the 30s. Because <laughs> usually, um, oh, it, with, with Viking X, I literally people are like, oh, yes, I'm 23. I'm like, God, get yeah, it. Yeah, and you're a world champion, like, and you've got life sort of. <laughs> exactly, yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm so old. I'm 22, and I've just won, you know, a WBC title. I'm like, gosh, yeah, I'm so it. underachieved. Um, so, so like, obviously, like, 32, which is even more credit to you being able to have that, not only determination and mental strength, but the physicality to be able to do something like that in your 30s, you know? Yeah, well, look, there was guys there in their 40s, like, um, and actually two guys in quite their late 40s, like, so they were, like, really, really cool, like, to be able for them to keep up with us, like, so... That so do, would you agree that age is just a number and that it's all to do with mindset? Yes, but I do think there's a certain experience as well. Like, and like, I wouldn't have been able to do this when I was 18. Um, even though I probably might have been physically fitter at the time, I think there's definitely like a robustness mm. um, and experience that comes, comes with age as well. Like, um, and I think even as well as with the course, the leadership side of things and the communication side of things like um i think the guys with more life experience it did it did stand for a little bit mm. very interesting so then back to yourself with uh the coaching and the boxing and different things at, at what point did you decide to obviously you've studied to be a personal trainer and to you know to to get the the qualifications to do what you do so at what kind of stage in your life did you decide right fitness is where i want to go that's where the goal is and how did that side of things get started for you? Um, 
so yeah, I took a bit of a roundabout route to it. Like, so I went to college, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I just like I like reading, so I studied English and history, and that was the basis of why I chose that course. Just because <laughs> I was like, oh, you probably get to reload the book there. So that's why I did it. Like, there was no like career like outline in mind. Um, and kind of I kind of knew halfway through. I was like, I shouldn't have done this really, but I stuck it out. Um, and so after that, I was working, um, I kind of wanted to get into social work. So I was working in Dublin Simon Community. Amazing. In an addiction treatment centre. Um, and But when I was there, all the lads knew that I kind of boxed because I was always coming in with black eyes and stuff. And they used to ask me to, to show them a little bit of stuff because, you know, they used to drink for whatever, 12, 15 hours a day, and now they weren't. So yeah, you have to keep them with that time, don't you? So we kind of noticed that the guys that were training with me stayed sober a lot longer. Wow. Um, yeah, it was, um, I suppose it's kind of obvious when you think about it, but like it was a bit of a revelation. So we set up a service uh, called the health and wellbeing service. So I used to, I was like a personal trainer for homeless people. Um, so it's pretty cool. Like, um, and we set up little boxing gyms and we used to have a football team and a running club and stuff. So I kind of realized this is way cooler than social work. Like it's combining that um with, with like the fitness and the nutrition side of things um but when I was doing that I was I was living in Dublin at the time but I was coming home every night the boxing club was in Nace I was coming home every night to the boxing club and I realized I used to kind of look forward to seven o'clock every night because that's when I got to go coaching the boxers like and I kind of realized wait a minute like if you're only looking forward to two hours a day out of your day why don't you just make that your 24 hours so I decided just to move home and just like coach full time. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my route. And then from there, just set up my own gym. That's very interesting in what you're saying there. Um, that twig of knowledge that you had of like, oh, recognizing in your day you have that two hours or seven o'clock, I'm happiest here. Mm. Why can't I fill the rest of my day with an equal amount of joy or doing stuff that gives me yeah. this much joy? And it's like the age old thing of people who take that nine to five job and who wake up and who just like do the job and come home and just are stuck in front of the TV and, and don't actually push themselves to find either what their purpose is or what their passion is. Mm. But it's so obvious though, like when, when that dawned on me, I wasn't able to do another single day of work. Like yeah. I was <laughs> like, I was like, this is, this is ridiculous like why you know why would I not do it and I actually I just left I just left my job like I, I obviously professionally handed them my notice and people ever all my co-workers were like what are you going to do I was like I'm just I'll figure it out but I know it's not this like because I'm not happy here anymore and every one of them was like I wish I could do that mm. I was like you can and they're like no I can't do it I was like you can and it's just they're so afraid like you know they're afraid yes. of us living their true passion and their true purpose and um that everyone's like oh you're taking such a big risk I was like the risk is not doing it like the risk is doing this for 40 more years that's the risk isn't it yes yeah absolutely and I've always like I've never understood the conversation of I can't or I'm not able or mm -hmm. letting the fear get in the way and almost to a point where I kind of wish sometimes that I did have a little bit of fear because <laughs> I'm like <laughs> I'm I'm very much in the present and obviously I I we, a business and stuff like that I plan ahead but you know stuff like owning a house or having kids getting married like you know being a certain level in your career none of that comes into play for me it's like what am I doing right now and at the end of every week am I happy and satisfied and fulfilled in some kind of way mm. but like that's the goal you know what I mean yeah that's most people's goal like as in you see all people like when they have whatever all these material things and just give it away like eventually mm -hmm. whereas what you do that now like you know what I mean you don't need those things and yeah and what what's really interesting is I always think that the money will come if you're following your purpose and your passion yes absolutely whereas if you follow money you won't find purpose and passion all the time like, so um and as well like when we set up the gym like we had to go unpaid for ages like mm. but you kind of realize sure 
you don't need it. Like, you know what I mean? You don't... It's, it's funny how when, when you're in that mindset, that money doesn't actually matter. And once you've got your, obviously your bills <laughs> pays and you can mm. feed yourself, everything else yeah. just falls by the wayside. And I remember yeah. when I first made, for myself even, when I decided to leave working full time and, and do Fight Connect TV full time. And, you know, like there was a bit of a crossover where you're not able to do the things that you used to do, like be able to go out on the weekends or to go away on holidays with your friends. And so there is sacrifice. There definitely is sacrifice. Yeah. But I always weighed it up with like all that stuff will come down the line when, you know, when, when it pays off and I'm in a business or a lifestyle that, I've worked really hard to be in and it makes me totally happy. Yeah, but like, yeah, you might miss a two week holiday with your friends, but you're happy the other 52 or 50 weeks of the yeah. year. Like, do exactly. you want to be unhappy for 50 weeks so you can have a two week Hell holiday? No. Like, I don't get that at all. Like, I don't yeah. know. Maybe, maybe we're mad. I don't know, but I don't, I just don't get that at all. Like, yeah, so. no, I agree with you. I agree with you. Is that something then that you, like, because obviously you found the joy in, finding that and then obviously mm. you're working with people that are coming to you for that to either better their fitness or better their health or their nutrition so they're looking mm. for help in some kind of way would you ever find yourself kind of being a sort of a lifestyle coach as well and and getting them to sort of look at themselves in a 360 package as opposed to just fixing their nutrition or fixing their um weight or or their fitness yeah definitely it's something I always talk about like and it's kind of dangerous like because a lot of we work with a lot of kids like um yeah. and all the parents are always like now will you tell <laughs> you have a chat with them about going to college and I'm always telling the kids the secret I'm like don't go to college like just like do whatever you want to do like you know what I mean yeah. um and so but you have to balance obviously but yeah I I <laughs> my my views on health have changed massively like you know um in what way so with, as I was kind of saying with boxing and nutrition, like I had to be so dialed in, like you know what I mean, and it got got quite unhealthy. Um, like someone only asked me about a bag of chips before, and I realized I went for eight years without having a bag of chips when I boxed. Like, wow, is that is that healthy? Like, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, that's a good point, and, actually. And I remember, um my 20th birthday I was living in college and I was studying in my room and my roommates called me out of the room because they bought me a chocolate cake like, for my birthday which is an absolutely normal thing to do and I had the cake to be polite but I was fucking furious with them like because I had a fight two weeks later like I was like how fucking dare they buy me a cake when I have a fight two weeks later like I'm like that's mental to think like that it's not mm. like I went to the spot after that like like I think that's not really healthy so whereas now like if I want to slice of cake like it's healthier to have it than to not have it as well and I think yeah. that extends like your lifestyle so remember I said when I was working in Dublin Simon like the second I realized I shouldn't be doing this anymore I couldn't breathe like my lungs closed up like yeah when I went to train on that night I could train all night so there was nothing wrong with my lungs like mm. but there was like a physical manifestation of my mentality telling me this isn't right anymore so I kind of believe that a lot with a lot of um, a lot of kind of physical symptoms like say bloating or like fatigue and things like that. Mm. I think it's because people are happy like it. I don't think it's like gluten or anything like that. I think it's are you actually happy in your lifestyle? Like, yes. That's way more important than yes. intolerance like. Absolutely. And mm. also I, I've been reading um Paul Check does a great I don't know if you know him, he's a holistic health coach, but he does a great um a blog on a very a similar kind of uh, idea to what you just said there, but basically how stress manifests itself as visceral fat. Uh -huh. Especially you know, and like all these different things that and even mm. stress from not only stress from from toxic foods that you're eating, but also overtraining. So that stress just comes from all different areas, and like mm -hmm. it's there's so much in it. You know what I mean? You have people that kill themselves in a gym or kill mm. themselves working out, and then they wonder why they've got like loads of visceral fat on their thighs or their mm. their butt or their stomach. You know? Yeah, like once you understand the chemistry of stress, and you know what cortisol does, like. Cortisol is catabolic to muscle and anabolic to fat cells, which is literally the opposite of what you want in training. Like you want to build muscle and burn fat, but mm -hmm. stress is the opposite. Like it 
burns like it breaks down muscle and like sometimes you can store more fat like so again the stress of thinking oh god will i have that glass of wine versus have the bloody glass of wine like the stress is what's doing the damage not the wine like so and um, i think stress is actually what's causing the problems people like not a bit of gluten like Absolutely. What do you think is, um, if you look at kind of all the clients that you work with that come into you, what is the kind of number one sort of um, request or need for you in their lives? Like, is it, would it be weight management? Like, what's the, the common thread that you see amongst everyone that comes in? Um, I suppose it wouldn't be um, a want from people, but it is a need. Posture. Wow. Like, posture is massive. Um, and it's normally how I normally convince people to come to the gym because like 90% of our clients are desk based. Mm -hmm. So sitting in this hunched over posture all day and they're sitting down for, you know, they probably drive an hour to work, sit down for eight hours at the desk, drive home for an hour, come to the gym for an hour and probably sit down for three more hours on the couch. Like, so their hip and glutes are just locked up. So normally when we do a lot of, and it's a massive thing for boxing as well, because and all combat sports because guys are sitting down or they're on their phone all day so their shoulders are all punched forward and then they come into a gym and boxing pulls their shoulders forward even more like so you know we do loads and loads of of rowing type movements where we pull our shoulders yeah. back um, and we just you can't do enough of that in boxing and any combat sport and in life in general like so normally when we fix people's posture they just notice that they had all these little pains of going away and then they feel better and they look much slimmer then as well, like because their shoulders are back, so their stomach is pulled in. Yeah, of course. Mm. Well, that's really interesting, and pro and that's not if you ask the general person on the streets, you know, the last place that they probably would look is their posture. Yeah, one hundred. It's not it's not a sexy topic to yeah. advertise, <laughs> like, you know I mean? but um, it it's really not like and so many people have like you know shoulder pain and like yeah. sore lower back and stuff like that and. I love helping people to get fitter, but I love taking away pain. Like taking away pain is, is really, really, if you can do that for someone, it's really, really cool. Like, so. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So then let's talk uh, finally about boxing and um, probably for anyone that is watching or anyone that is a fan of Fight Connect or boxing in Ireland, they'll know that you've worked recently with Gary Cawley. It's probably your, most famous export. <laughs> yeah. The, but I diva. had the diva. I had him on um the first exchange podcast a couple of weeks ago. Um and obviously he spoke about you quite a bit and how important your role in in his career and his his life has been. Yeah. He spoke really well, didn't he? Like he's he he's getting... really, really did. Yeah. yeah. He really like did. And it's twenty four like he do you know what? And he's so um like I, I I knew as soon as I interviewed him, like post fight interviews, that I was going to get him onto the podcast because I could just see something in like the way that he spoke, and he just, he just he he's very different to a lot of fighters. You know yeah. what I mean? Like in yeah. that, he had a very kind of wise um, head on his shoulders, and I was like, "There's mm. something here. I need to get him on the podcast." And then when he came on, you know, he he re like you said, he did speak so well and so openly and so honestly, and Maybe it's because I'm 35 and I kind of have the, you know, the experience of age <laughs> that I mm. sort of appreciate when someone is that young and they have that, that insight. Because I feel like for me, I, I was on such a journey in my 20s that it was only like when I was 29, 30, I really got a grasp of like who I was and where I kind mm. of sat in the world. And when I was 24, I definitely didn't have a clue and I, I definitely wasn't having any kind of, um, you know, spiritual um conversation or, or any kind of like viewpoint on consciousness in, in any sort of capacity so to see someone like him you know be so driven and know exactly where he wants to be in the world is is um very inspiring yeah yeah he um so obviously he shared a lot of his personal circumstances last year like you know with his his mother like um and i know it's crap it was terrible but yeah he's he, he like he's matured more i think in the last year than he had in the in the two or three before that like you know he he's really grown into a good man now you know um so like what's interesting is winning say a world title 
you have to be able to be ready for it talent wise but you have to be ready for all that comes with it as well don't you like and i think at 22 i probably i don't know was he ready for all that you know what i mean so i'm always trying to hold him back hold him back hold him back but like because he probably could actually beat some of these guys at the moment like but um I think now he's more ready for it. And so when it happens for him in probably another year or two, like he's going to be able to cope with it. Mm-hmm. Like even the money that's going to come and um, the fame that's going to come. Um, so yeah, like he really did mature a lot the last year. Like, so I'm really proud of how he handled it all. Um, Cause there's even more as well that he didn't say like, you know, so yeah. he's handled a lot like for, for a 20, 22, three, four year old. He's, he's done really, really well. Absolutely. And also like credit to you as well, because he's lucky that he has someone like you that that is in his life that is able to not only be a friend, but also give him, you know, help in terms of his boxing and nutrition and, you know, someone that I I find that someone that you can um, really rely on is very hard to find, especially when you, you do see the guys that are kind of climbing up the ranks and they do start to get a little bit more popular and money does come and a little bit of fame comes you know, mm. you always wonder, do they have someone in their lives that, you know, was there from the start or genuinely cares about how they're, they're doing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Ah, but look, we'd be, we'd be pretty close, like, you know, so I've known him for, Jesus, 14, 15 years or something. How, and did, then you, I how suppose... did you get started to working together? Like, what, what happened? Because I know he, he's training under Pete Taylor, but you, yeah. you'll be his boxing coach back in Nice. Yeah, so we would have been in the same club. And then when I was kind of transitioning into being a coach then as well, um, he was obviously still a boxer. And then I suppose a lot of it was, like, we just, we gelled. Um, so what happened was we went away, this was 10 years ago, we went away to a tournament in Denmark, the Evador Box Cup or something in Copenhagen. And um, so... I, I went away with him, like, and I think that's the first time we really, really clicked, like, um, so he stopped the German kid in the first round there, like, <laughs> um, and then, that, <laughs> yeah, and then everyone else wanted to go, like, have burgers or whatever, like, do you want, do you know what he wanted to do that night? Spar 12 rounds. So yeah. he just won an international tournament, and all he kept talking was, can we spar 12 rounds tonight? Like, he just wanted to do 12 rounds. Like, I was like, this kid is fucking weird, like, there's, like, there's more to him like than people realize like um and from then we started just working together a lot because I was kind of in Nace a lot more so I'd have the time to to work with him twice a day because mm-hmm. my gym was like five minutes from his house or something like that so um just kind of built from there built from there and then so was, his success has been good for me as well because when Gary was saying the high performance he was always bringing back drills from Zor and Billy Walsh and all these amazing coaches. I have all those drills now. Like, and then when he started working with Pete, like Pete has been unbelievable to me. Like, you know, he's been such a great mentor. Like I think the main thing with Pete is he's so generous. Like Pete will just mm-hmm. literally, he'll give all his drills. Like he can't, you know, some people try to keep their secrets. Like mm-hmm. Pete just gives away. He's like, here, he'll call you over when people are sparring and he'll just be like looking at someone's feet and showing you like, see the way his weight is on his back foot more than his front foot. Now this is going to happen in a second. I'm like, how the fuck can he see that? Like, you know what I mean? He just sees all this little yeah. detail, but wow. so like I'm getting all of like all this knowledge off Pete now at this young age, like, so, um, and he's been really, really good to me in terms of like, you know, I got to see Luke Keeler's, world title training camp I got to see like the lads training for the golden contract and you know be in the corners of of all these things like so it's class like so yeah it's yeah. it's it's amazing and like what you're saying there that's how you know um somebody who is confident of themselves and their own ability yeah, is yeah, that definitely. they're not afraid to bring somebody else in in the same mm-hmm. field and show them like that. I, that's always such yeah. a, an amazing quality I find in people, not only in coaches, but it, it's the coaches or the people who try and hide or, you know, are secretive about different things. It's like, well, if, if you're so confident in yourself and your ability, yeah. you don't have to worry about that, you know? Mm. And even not being afraid to be questioned is a big thing as well. It's not yeah. like, so as in Pete Art will always go, what do you think of that? Like, sh- should we do this or should we do that? And like, whereas someone that was unsecure would just be saying, 
this is what we have to do. And if you ask yes. why, because oh, that's the way we've always done it. Like if someone ever answers that, no, they're, they're bluffing like, but yeah, yeah. He's always like, is there anything else we can do here? Or what, what do you think? And I was like, why is he asking me? Like, you know what I mean? But he's just, he's amazing. Like, so he he's, yeah, he's a genius of a coach. Like, so. Absolutely. And in terms of boxing, you know, Wicca, would you like to develop, you know, your own boxing gym? Like, what way does it work for you? Is it just kind of, do you do boxing sort of as part of your day as a personal trainer? Or is that where it ends? Or do you have any vision or aspiration to, to do it a little bit more full time, I suppose? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, I have the gym and I love that. Um, but I think I suppose the boxing side is I'm probably more passionate about that really in terms yeah. of you know, I would normally do the boxing classes in the gym and um, run that side of things. Um, so I train Gary, I train Caitlin Phelan then. Um, oh, so yeah, she's, course, yeah. Yeah, so she's amazing as well. Like, she's only, she's 3-0, and oh, like, but she's only 19. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's interesting as well is the female side of things. So she's ranked higher in the world than Gary is. Even, so she only had three fights, Gary's had 10. Um, but just the the talent pool is much shallower. Yeah, of course, yeah. Like she, she's like nearly top 30 in the world after three fights, like. And again, going back to what I said about Gary, like, again, I'm just trying to hold Caitlin back and I don't know how long I can hold her back for, like, because she just wants to fucking fight everyone, like, and um, and talent-wise, she probably is as good as most of them out there. But, um, you know, I'm like, she's only 19, she's only a kid. Like, I, ha- I, have, I have an obligation to mind her as a person, mm. not just win a world title like when she's not ready for it so is that difficult because you know you're automatically the bad guy in a, in a sense because they want to fight and you know they want to be left to you know i'm ready and they feel that they're ready and they have the confidence mm-hmm. and you know it'd be concerned and if they were saying no i'm not ready i don't want to fight um so mm-hmm. is it is it hard to kind of be the bad guy and have to go no you're not ready i have to put the reins on you a little bit but you know your time will come or is that just all part of it no, yeah, like you can't, you can't always make your decisions because you want to be liked by your athlete. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, half the time they fucking hate me. Like, you know what I mean? Because you're asking <laughs> to do drills, like or sprints. Oh, like, so I actually just finished a run with Gary there like an hour ago, and like it was, it wasn't nice. Like, it, it, I was like, this is not fucking fun. Like, you know what I mean? But you have to do it. Like, you know. And and last week we did a sprint session, and like he was getting he was in a bad way. Like after we were doing six, six of them. And after four, he was on the ground. Like, it's hard to watch him like that, but you have to make me the last two. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's because when he's in that world title fight in Vegas and he didn't do those last two, it's going to show. Um, so you can't always try to be the nice guy. You know what I mean? You have to do what's right for them. And, and if you know, you made a decision that was right for them, you can sleep that night. You can stand over it. Like, so, and, you know, I, I could put Caitlin into like a big fight now because she could, she'd be able to get it, but that's not right. You know what I mean? And um, even though she might want it, mm-hmm. I have to be able to do the right thing. And regardless, if you do the right decision and it doesn't go the right way or whatever, like you can stand over, can't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Final question for everything that you have experienced in life, in work, everything accumulative. What's the biggest lesson that you've learned? Um, so as I said, I read, I love reading, mm-hmm. um, it's a great book called the obstacles, the way. Yes. Have you read it? I haven't read it, but I know it's on my to read list. Yeah. So the, there's an author, Ryan Holiday, and it's, it's called the obstacle is the way. And it really, it makes you reframe how you look at problems because he gives so many examples of how the reward comes right after the problem. Mm-hmm. So you then look at a problem like deadly, the reward is really, really close. So like if something bad happens to you, that's really good then because there's a good thing happening right after it. Does that make sense? Yes. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. bad things actually become good things then. Like, so if you're having like a really, really big obstacle in front of you, like, you know, just say you're trying to get this podcast off the ground and there's massive obstacles there. Those obstacles are really good because it means there's a massive reward coming. Um, yeah. So it's it's just like push through the obstacle because like the reward is right there and um, so i kind of have that imprinted in my brain like in the whole way through hell week is like 
the bigger the obstacles got, I was like deadly, like because we're nearly there, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. Like there's a big reward coming right after this big obstacle, like so. So good, so good, mm. and it, it's it, it's you know taking the positive out of every negative. It's not in this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like even this whole situation we're in at the moment, like you know, it's massive obstacles for people. Like you know, businesses are shut down, but just yeah. push through it, like because we don't know what to do with it, like you know. And more than likely, yes. it's going to be something good if we just, just push through, push through, and like just keep the bigger goal in mind and just keep going towards it. Yes, absolutely, I agree. Before I let you go, let's just—I'll just turn on uh, the comments just in case anyone has a couple of comments that they sure. want to leave before we go. But um, aside from all the work stuff and everything, uh, are, what are you kind of doing? What are you filling your day with? Obviously, you're training and you're working with Gary and different bits, but. Are you doing anything a little bit different that you wouldn't normally do? Are you taking advantage of this situation? Um, well, like, so we're, we're still training twice a day. Yeah. So we're doing, and we're keeping the exact same time. So it's 11 o'clock and five o'clock every day. So I think that's been the biggest thing, like just having that structure and routine. Because yeah. I know what time I have to be up at. I know what time I have to go to bed at. Um, so the routine has been really, really, really important for us. Um apart from that just just kind of reading and i suppose the hell week thing was in the middle of all of it so that was taking up a wee bit of time um and a bit of attention but i'm kind of glad it's done now you know what i mean i can kind of put that to bed and then move forward with the next chapter um but yeah just taking the time just to to read rest cook um just chill out a wee bit more what, what as do also. you cook and what's your speciality i like cooking actually yeah um i like i suppose breakfast type things um like i'd have breakfast three times a day like um, <laughs> you, are you, you, can are have you napping are you napping three times a day as well <laughs> no not yet um i actually i have um i know i sound really spoiled um i have a sauna in my apartment you are shitting me yeah no it's only you know just the small ones like the one person sauna yeah um but yeah i bought that for myself last year um and i have like i'm looking around my bedroom now there's a chin-up bar over there like i have a little gym here like so you're grand i'm happy I, like i'm grand like so and and even remember what i said about like us we're still in the startup phase of our business like so we weren't even paying ourselves that much so this 350 quid a week like that's i'm making a profit out of this like <laughs> like that's the way i was i was like what you mean i get 350 staying at home i was like yeah yeah I'm on, this is a profit like that's a pay rise yeah. for me like so yeah. um i hope we keep going yeah long may it last that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you know, people are freaking out. Like, with, you know, so many of my friends are like, I can't go ahead. I'm feeling claustrophobic in my house. Like, I'm so bored. I'm like, I'm tackling that list of things that I was too busy yeah, to do. Yeah. That, like, you know, and it's, there's just so much opportunity to, like, be creative. Well, for me, be creative and think about stuff down the line and what I want to do when everything is back to normal and stuff that you just don't get the opportunity to do. Yeah, it's like decluttering and painting yeah. and all these kind of things like that. Yeah, um, like I know. I suppose we're still in the novelty phase, and please God, we're not here in two, three more months. Like, yeah. but um, yeah, it's it's good just to rest as well and reset. And I think um, this is a great time to kind of realize like what actually what do you miss? Like, what do you really miss at the moment? Like, you know what I mean? And if there's something that after these two months you have and miss, like get rid of it. Like just get yeah. that out of your life. You don't need that. Um, and the things you do really, really miss, like double down on them. Yes. Um, because it really does it. It really lets you know what's actually important, doesn't it? Mm, yeah, absolutely. And also, how much you don't need. Yeah. No, you I'm know? happy enough with feck all. Like so, it's you know, do you actually really need all those things? And exactly. You know, yeah. That's it. Let's have a look work. at some of the comments here. Um, Kildare Rambo stick. <laughs> this thing <laughs> here i want to i want to make a public decoration for a minute do you know who the stig is well yeah i do are we allowed to say who it is the stig is a is a legend right i i think you know what people so P pete's stable has obviously grown massively over the last year or so yes and look the number one reason is pete, pete is a coach and that's obvious right but people don't realize all the people in the team around like there's do you know, I, I, they don't even like being talked about either, so I'm going to get killed for this. Do you know Mark Kennedy? Yes. Like, I 
I only go up there some days, like, just to get a hug off Mark, like. <laughs> I, I'm like, I don't even need to be here today. I just want to come up and chat to Mark, like. You know what I mean? Talking about Mark is always in work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. It's like, see, see I just fucked up. Um, and, like, Butch, Butch is a legend, like, and streamer, like, as in, the, once, once Pete says, right, training, the lads switch on and they train, right? But the 20 minutes, like, they all get there, like, a half an hour early, like. Yeah. And they don't do that because, like, they're all so fucking funny, like, and so sound. And then once the session's over, you end up there, like, for another fucking hour after the session, like, just because it's good crack as well, like, you know. It is. It's good energy. You know, Anytime I've been in really film, it's like. You just, you know, you're just, well, you're made to feel so welcome, but also you understand why everyone does so well is because the vibe mm-hmm. that's there and, you know, everyone's there to work hard and work together, but it's yeah. a really good bunch of lads. Yeah, uh, they're, they're unreal, like, and the talent What did there Gary say? You haven't beaten them in a run yet. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's fucking true. Um, is it? Yeah, I used to be able to beat them. I used to be. Now, I can push them hard. But yeah, I can't. He surpassed me, the fucker. Oh, um, well, so there's all, your all our runs for the rest are, of the year. Yeah, all our runs are social distance runs. Um, <laughs> if I can't fucking catch him. Um, Brilliant. Well, listen, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. No, thank you. Thanks a million. And like the work that, that you do, like you're at every bloody show, like, and you're just, you're, no, honestly, like it's, the sport does need people like you like to to push and help promote them and, and you do it like for the goodness of the fighters like so so fair play to you like you're doing thank a great job thank you so much I really appreciate it I genuinely appreciate that a lot thank you very much no no and I, I, I do I, I honestly mean it like the amount of videos you're putting up and I only know from the boxing side of things like but I see all the, the cage like the MMA stuff as well like so um, God knows how many videos you've put up and how many fighters you've helped to get their name out there. Like, so, you well, know, listen, you're doing a great job. Thank you very much. It won't be possible with people like you and all the lads giving me your time. Mm. So we're all in it together, isn't that it? That's it, yeah. Definitely. But listen, congratulations again. I'm delighted for you. And when we're back to normal, I'm going to get you onto the podcast, the first exchange. We'll, we, we can go into more detail about everything. Okay. Um, I, I, I was, my plan was to get you onto that. And then like coronavirus hit, I was like, no, no, no. no. But uh, we'll get you on. And um, best of luck with everything. Enjoy the successes of uh, Beauty TV star for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks. See you later. Bye, Bye, Niall. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, guys. Hope you enjoyed.